Hi and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be looking at body systems and we're going to focus on the circulatory system. To help us do that we're going to split this video into four sections. So we're going to look at why large animals need a transport system, the features of an effective transport system, we're going to look at some simple circulatory systems, some closed, double and some open systems and we're going to look at a plan of uh, mammalian circulation. Okay, so why do large animals need to have a transport system? Well, if we have a look at a unicellular organism, so something like an amoeba, you can see here you've just got one cell, and this cell actually carries out all of its functions. Um, so, for example, it will carry out its um, assimilation of its uh, food, it will carry out its digestion, it also gets all its nutrients from its environment as well and it will do that through things like diffusion, osmosis and also active transport. However, if you look at a multicellular organism, for example like an earthworm, it's quite obvious that the cells within the earthworm aren't in contact with its environment. Therefore, it's going to need a way of transporting the nutrients from its environment towards those cells. Okay, so for a multicellular organism to have a good transport system, it needs to have a few features. Um, one of those features is a medium to carry the nutrients around the body. So in animals, we call that blood, and that's made up of plasma and those red blood cells and white blood cells. Um, you need a pump to create the pressure that's going to force that fluid around the body. And you're also going to need vessels to carry the medium from one area to another. Most importantly, the exchange surfaces need to be able to allow transfer of nutrients in both directions. So the useful materials need to be able to enter and you also need to be able to get rid of the waste materials as well. And obviously having a transport system which has two circuits is a much more efficient way of transporting those nutrients around the body as well. So here's our closed single transport system. You've got three parts to it. You've got the body tissues, you've got the heart, and you've got the gills. So this is obviously a transport system that's um, within fish. Now because it's just a single transport system, the blood pressure actually decreases as it goes, or as the blood passes through the gill capillaries, which obviously then slows down the flow of blood to the rest of the body. Because the blood is slowing down, that limits the rate of uh, O2 and nutrient delivery to cells, and it also limits the race or the removal of waste. However, this is okay for fish because they don't uh, need to maintain their body temperature, therefore they don't need to respire as much as mammals, for example. Now here's our double, well, double circulatory system. Um, as I said before, you've got two circulations. You've got the pulmonary circulation, which is going from the heart and taking deoxygenated blood towards the lungs, where it can absorb some oxygen, where it's then pumped back towards the heart. The systemic circulation, therefore, takes oxygenated blood from the heart, pumps it towards the body tissues, where the, uh, the nutrients and oxygen is used. Waste is then put back into the blood, and it's uh, or transported back towards the heart. Now the big difference between the double circulation compared to the single circulation is the fact that apart from there obviously being two separate routes within the double circulation it's the blood is pumped at high pressure and that's to speed up the removal and delivery of nutrients to and from cells. Now the open circulatory system is a system in which fluid in a cavity actually bathes the organs directly with the oxygen and the nutrients. So there's actually no distinction between blood or any tissue fluid or anything like that. Okay, so here's the plan of the mammalian circulatory system. Just a few key points to note. Yep. First one being that it is a closed circulation and the second one being that it's also a double circulation as well. So you've got your two circuits, your pulmonary 
and your systemic as well. So the blood passes through the heart twice per complete circuit. Now when it's going through the pulmonary circuit and it goes into the lungs, oxygen diffuses into red blood cells, which is what the RBCs stand for. And so the blood becomes oxygenated, but then gets pumped or back to the left atrium where it then goes into the left ventricle and then pumped out through the aorta to the rest of the body. Oxygen then diffuses from the blood into the body cells while CO2 moves in the opposite direction into the blood plasma. That then gets carried back towards the right atrium, the right ventricle, and then it gets pumped towards the lungs where it gets rid of the waste gases and takes in more oxygen to once again become oxygenated blood. Okay, so that concludes this short presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to keep a lookout for some more videos coming up soon.